from history. Welcome, my illustrious internet intelligentsia, to another episode of Weirdos from History, where we dive into the lives of history's most peculiar personalities, probing their peculiarities with sharp wit and a cheeky chuckle. Today we dissect the life of Carrie A. Nation, the temperance terror who smashed her way into infamy. Fasten your sashes and pour yourself a non-alcoholic libation as we embark on a rollicking recount of the original party pooper. Born on November 25th, 1846, in Garrard County, Kentucky, Caroline Amelia Moore, or Carrie to her friends and foes alike, came into the world destined to smash societal norms, along with a few bar mirrors. She grew up amidst a family that was a cocktail of calamity with a dash of derangement. Her mother, known for her royal delusions, believed herself to be Queen Victoria. One can only assume this made family dinners delightfully delusional. Carrie's early life was marked by frequent financial floundering and relocations, as her father, George Moore, was as adept at managing money as a drunkard in a dart-throwing contest. In 1854, the Moore family moved to Belton, Missouri, where young Carrie would eventually meet her first misfortune in matrimony. In 1867, Carrie married Charles Gloyd, a Union Army physician who preferred his whiskey neat and his wife neglected. Their marriage was as short-lived as a bar tab paid up front. Charles died of alcohol-induced ailments just two years later, leaving Carrie a widow with a baby girl, Charlene. It's safe to say this rocky romance planted the seeds of her temperance tyranny. After her first husband's demise, Carrie took up teaching in Holden, Missouri, while internally fermenting a fervor against alcohol. Her teaching tenure lasted just long enough for her to meet David A. Nation, a lawyer, minister, and journalist whom she married in 1874. This union produced more friction than fiction, and their relationship was as frosty as a prohibitionist's reception at a speakeasy. The nations moved to Texas, where they attempted and failed to run a cotton plantation. Their misfortune in farming led them to operate a hotel in Columbia, Texas, where Carrie's managerial might shone. Yet even in the hospitality business, the spirits she dealt with were far from friendly. In 1889, the family moved to Medicine Lodge, Kansas, where Carrie began her campaign against the demon rum with the Woman's Christian Temperance Union, WCTU. Here, her disdain for drunkenness transformed from a quiet contempt into a full-blown, Bible-thumping battle cry. Her initial methods of protest were relatively mild, praying and singing hymns outside saloons, but when her celestial serenades failed to dry up the town's tipplers, Carrie turned to more direct demonstrations of divine displeasure. In June 1900, she received what she believed to be a message from God, go to Kiowa and smash. And smash she did. Armed with a box of smashers, rocks wrapped in newspaper, she launched her first raid on Dobson's saloon in Kiowa, Kansas, announcing, men, I have come to save you from a drunkard's fate, she proceeded to obliterate the bar with the fervor of a holy hurricane. For Carrie, it was the dawn of hatchetations, a term as blunt as her chosen weapon, an actual hatchet. With her trusty hatchet, Carrie went on a spree of saloon smashing that would make a bull in a china shop look like a librarian on Xanax. From Kansas to Oklahoma, she left a trail of shattered glass and perplexed patrons. In one memorable episode, she vandalized the Hotel Carey's Bar in Wichita, Kansas on December 27, 1900, reducing the establishment to splinters and spirits, spirits being the operative word. Not content to merely smash and dash, Carey was frequently jailed for her destructive deeds. Between 1900 and 1910, she was arrested some 30 times, each stint behind bars funded by lecture tours and sales of miniature hatchet pins, souvenirs for those who found her methods as novel as they were notorious. Carrie's hatchet-wielding ways reached their zenith in April 1901, when she took her temperance tantrum to Kansas City, Missouri, a metropolis known for its ambivalence toward abstinence. She was fined $500, an amount that would have bought a lot of liquor had she not been bent on banning it. Throughout her tumultuous tenure as America's temperance terror, Carrie's crusade extended beyond mere bar bashing. 
she established a shelter in Kansas City for women and children affected by alcohol, a precursor to modern battered women's shelters. Despite her typhoon-like tactics, she showed a charitable side even as she wielded her hatchet with reckless righteousness. Equally fervent was her opposition to Freemasonry, corsets, and any form of feminine frippery that she deemed frivolous. She even managed to alienate the suffrage movement, arguing that alcohol was the greater evil. One might say she viewed the world through the bottom of a smashed beer bottle, a perspective as narrow as it was clear. By 1908, Carrie had become a national figure, both lionized and lampooned. She took her tirades to the vaudeville stage, an arena as wild and eclectic as her own escapades. However, even here, her fiery fervor failed to ignite lasting applause, and she was often met with ridicule and rotten eggs rather than respect. In 1909, Carrie embarked on a tour of Great Britain, hoping to spread her temperance teachings across the pond. Unfortunately, her reception was frostier than a gin and tonic with extra ice. Pelted with eggs and booed off stages, she returned to the States with her mission unfulfilled, but her resolve undiminished. Carrie's later years saw her health decline, and in 1911 she collapsed during a lecture in Eureka Springs, Arkansas. Her final words, I have done what I could, encapsulated a life of relentless, if somewhat reckless, dedication to her cause. She died on June 9, 1911, and was buried in Belton, Missouri, with a headstone declaring, Faithful to the cause of prohibition, she hath done what she could. And there you have it, dear viewers, the tale of Carrie A. Nation, the temperance tornado, who left a legacy as shattered as the bar mirrors she despised. If you enjoyed this jaunt through history's hall of oddities, don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave a comment below. Until next time, keep your glasses full. Of knowledge, that is. Cheers to history's weirdos.